My name is Peter Kanegi and um, I farm with my family um, on a 450-acre parcel of ground um, in the Willamette floodplain near Albany. We produce quite a wide range of crops. Um, historically, when I was growing up, my father produced pretty much beans, corns, and strawberries for, for Norpac foods and occasionally a little bit of grain. Um, in the last 25 years we, we've diversified quite a bit into we still do corn and beans for Norpac. Um, we raise, um, we do contract vegetable seed production, a hybrid red radish is the main one of those, um, but at various times other things too. We raise um, various cover crop seeds um, commercial grass seed and grass and forb seed and wetland seed for the native restoration market. We currently operate the farm. It's my wife Tina and I and um, our two kids. Our son is full-time and um, at least in the summer and our daughter works uh, here in the summer too. I, I've been farming on this property for over 25 years and my goals over that time have uh, basically stayed the same with some minor changes, but the, the, the main part of those goals have been to create and operate an economically sustainable and viable farm that provides a, a respectable living for our family and you know will be there for future generations to utilize in appropriate ways. My second primary goal has been to enhance and protect the ecological functions of this property from which we make a living. Those ecological functions revolve around the riparian areas that exist here, the seasonal wetlands and the off-channel habitat, and um, in addition to that, flood storage. Th those of us who farm and manage land in the floodplain um, can do an awful lot to um, help maintain and preserve the functions of the natural and habitat areas on our farms. One, one of the primary things we can do as farmers is to be really conscious of how we manage the vegetation on our farms. And it's not just the vegetation in our fields, but the vegetation around our fields, around our waterways. Much of the vegetation um, in riparian areas and sloughs, so not just on my farm, but all around the valley, is heavily impacted by invasive species. Um, you know, particularly in this area, the, the, the main culprits, blackberry and canary grass. Um, it can be a real challenge to figure out how to manage those grounds. And, and we, over time, have slowly been going into the, what we consider the worst areas, um, controlling those invasive species and trying to reestablish higher value native vegetation, um, primarily um, for the wildlife value. Um, one, one of the most critical things I think agriculture is facing is, you know, the whole water quality issue. And, you know, there's lots of things um, agriculture can do to minimize detrimental effects on, on water quality. Um, cover crops, grass roadways, reduced tillage, being careful, you know, leaving residue on the top of the ground. And, and you know, we can enhance riparian areas and um, you know, we can also, and this is probably not quite so much for water quality, but, you know, convert um, pieces of ground that really don't make sense to farm, that are uneconomical, inconvenient to farm, convert those um, parcels back to higher quality habitat. There are many different ways that farmers interact with water, use water, and, you know, we, we, we're dependent as a vegetable um, a grower, I'm dependent on irrigation to produce my crops. And one of the things we've done over the years is to try to uh, make our irrigation system as efficient as possible, upgrading from older inefficient systems um, to, so that we use less electricity to pump and less water, um, and thus we leave more in the river. And you know, those, those increasing those irrigation efficiencies also have the added benefit of increasing our production on our ground. You know, 
As someone who farms in the floodplain, we're intimately connected with the river. Um, the river is a everyday piece of our life, uh, particularly in the winter when, when, when the water comes up and, you know, the water comes in and it goes out. And we want to, you know, historically, um, you know, I don't know everything that's been done to this property, but there's been quite a bit of opening up of channels, um, you know, probably originally to drain the properties so they, they could be farmed, but those also maintain connectivity to the river. Um, so there's value to those management actions, both from an agricultural standpoint and from a fishery standpoint. One, one of the significant ways we try to protect um, water quality is, is through our nutrient management. Um, we use soil tests on a regular basis to determine the needs. We use split applications so we, we don't put everything on all at once. We, you know, we add nutrients as the crop need it, um, thus lessening the chance of, of leaching. We follow OSU's recommendations for um, quantities of nutrients for, for um, specific crops. We use cover cropping, um, typically behind, behind our row crops. Um, we, as soon as our, our crop is off, we'll plant a cover, establish a cover crop to actually trap and capture any um, leftover nutrients. The issues that we face in the agriculture community today water quality, the competition for land, you know, the endangered species, the salmon recovery. I mean, they're difficult to address, but I think it is possible to have both a vibrant, sustainable agricultural industry that operates in the floodplains and, and along our rivers, and at the same time protects our water quality, um, preserves and enhances ground for habitat for wildlife. I think it is incumbent on both the conservation community and the agriculture community to work together in a positive way to overcome the challenges we have.